Hello, welcome to my new channel. So just a little about myself. I'm Dominic. I'm a digital illustrator and emote artist around Twitch. You might have seen some of my work around Twitch like this or that or these. I stream my work almost every day on Twitch. So if you'd like to join in and say hello, I'll leave the link in the video description. All right, so let's get started. So if you plan on selling art for your clients on Twitch and streamers, yeah, I highly recommend using cloud saving like Dropbox and then having a file maybe like called Twitch emotes or something in which you place one file for every client. For example, here, if we click on my client, Alex Ray, then we see all of the emotes I've ever done for her, a bunch of PSD files. And then when it's time to export, what I do is I prepare a little folder here called emotes. And this is where I would export all of the, the drawings in the end. And this file, my clients have access to it. This is one thing that's really good about Dropbox. You can just right click, use copy Dropbox link, and then you ship that link to your client and they can forever access it and just like re-upload an emote whenever they want to replace it. Uh, let's talk about the other thing that I think is really, really good about it. Um, if you eventually run out of undos when you're drawing, and you're panicking because you can't recover like a previous state of your, your save files. For example, you can always click on your file, version history, and then you get some previous save state from each of your files here. And it, it goes back to like a few years. I don't, I don't even know if there's like a limit for it, but this is like amazing. It saved my life so many times when I was out of undos and you just uh, go back to your previous state and save your file. This is magical. Okay. Naming your files. You know how there's always like a prefix to the emotes when you go on Twitch? For example, Alexia, Alexia's emotes would be Alexia Derp, Alexia Love, Alexia something. You don't want to name it like Alexia something because then whenever you search for an emote, they would all start by A for Alexia, so you never like find them. So just call them by the actual emote topic, like Love, Fail, Derp. Now what I usually do to get started, I have one file that's called Sketches. Now, I made so many emotes for Alex Array that I have like three sketches files. But the way I like to prepare that, I'll show you here, is I make a big grid. Honestly, okay, I guess it's about 7,000 by 7,000 pixels. Uh, I've done it with 5,000 by 5,000. Of course, it's a big file, but if you have some computer space, I, uh, I would recommend that. I, I don't normally post uh, finished drawings here. This is only for sketching. So. Maybe I have a better example, I'll show you. Here we go, that's a little bit better. So uh, yeah, you can see how these are mostly sketches. And when I'm getting like, pretty content with the design, I'm like, okay, this is ready. Now I pick my, my sketch, Control C, Control N. And then this is, by the way, my file size for my emotes, for the original pieces. All right, let's, I guess let's talk about the file size. I think this is really important. Everybody asks me that all the time. So, the worst mistake when drawing an emote is to draw in 112 by 112. Oops, big mistake. Those are not enough pixels to be happy, to be comfortable when you're drawing. Look at that, you see them, you feel them. This is not fun for professional artists. But people that do that, they, th they just think that, you know, it's going to be better for when you export your emote than if you drew it in like 500 by 500 pixels and then scale down to 112. But no, not really. If you have a good compressing software like Photoshop, it doesn't matter how big your emote file size is. It could be 1000, 1000 by 1000. It doesn't matter. Your drawing once compressed to 112 will basically look the same as it would have if you drew it in that size. But the thing is, you want to choose a size where you're just simply going to be comfortable drawing. And for me, I need at least 400 by 400 pixels to be content, happy with just like sketching or doing some line work. I need enough pixels. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the reason why I wouldn't go with 1000 by 1000 is just file size over time. I make so many emotes per year that at the end of the year, that would be a lot of megabytes piling up. So I think like, like around 500 by 500 is perfect. But here, I have a weird theory. I have to talk about it. 
I don't know why, but I've always been making my original emote size in 400 by uh, 448 by 448. The reason is it's like a multiplicator of 112 technically, like divided by four. So it's just a theory that it would, it could be maybe able to compress better into 112 than if it was, for example, uh, 500 by 500. But that's just a theory. I would, I would really have no problem going and recommending all the time. 500 by 500. This is a perfect size to have enough pixels to be happy, like to be comfortable drawing. Enough pixels that's not too big on the hard drive. So this is my recommended size. Okay, also you may want to have a few shortcuts um, over time. I don't know if, if uh, you're using Photoshop, but the good old control and spacebar to zoom in and out. Uh, you just hold it, this is amazing. Otherwise, Alt and the right click button on your pen. You can just hold. Uh, if you go like left to right, it changes the size of the, of the nib. And then uh, if you go up and down, it changes the hardness. This is fantastic. Everybody should know this trick. Um, in the image mode here, what I hear, what I always hear is that 8 bits is standard. It's perfect, it's fine. Don't worry about anything else bigger. Uh, I hear you, ha you could use them like maybe 32 bits for like a big large scale uh, wallpaper artwork or maybe when you have it get a little bit like more advanced gradients but even then I think you would be drawing in like CMYK for exporting on prints eventually uh, regardless I think 8-bit is what I should recommend all right let's talk about exporting I don't know if you're using Photoshop I would hope so but here we go image file size or F1 if you have nifty shortcuts. All right, I was talking about shortcuts earlier. Another fun one for me to have is like F2, boom, layer. Uh, F4, you just switch like this. Um, F3 is like horizontally, that's like really important. Oh, here's something really good to know. When you're designing, when you're like sketching, sometimes you, like your, your brain gets used to what you're seeing and switching is a really really important trick because then it's like you have a new drawing in front of you and your brain has a fresh view on it so you may be having a better time telling if something's wrong if like the position like something's wrong in the drawing you would immediately see so it's a good trick to switch once in a while and see like oh this eye is a little bit uh, too low so let's just put it up here boom when you switch, aha, yeah, much better. Okay, so exporting, if I press F1, uh, you see here, that's my ratio right now, 448 pixels by 448. I always put my resolution of my file size uh, initially to 300. That's a DPI, by the way. Um, dot per inch or whatever. <laughs> um, this is good for if eventually you want to print it out like on a t-shirt or something like if a client wants you to put it on the t-shirt first of all you should negotiate terms and I'm going to talk about that in a future video copyrights and stuff like that so they might want it for example in a bigger size for a print and then and then you'll be able to do so easier if the resolution is already very high with 300 that's that is purely for printing this, this number doesn't have to do anything with uh, showing up online on the browser page. Image resize. So there is three sizes that Twitch requires for you to upload a new emote. It's because it's going to appear in various different resolutions depending on if someone is watching uh, Twitch on their iPad or phone or the browser page. Ironically, the smallest size, like the 28 by 28 ratio, is the one that shows on the browser even if you have a big monitor so it is ironic but it, that's how it is so the 28 by 28 is the most important one uh, you'll see a lot of like artists that make that go crazy with the smallest details big gradients here anime anime waifu little cheeks yeah these details you won't see them in the small size it doesn't matter if you want to be a good emote artist, focus on what the 28 by 28 ratio looks like. 
In the end, it's a minimalist art form. It takes a lot of experience and once you nail it, your drawing should look good on the t-shirt and on the tiniest size. And that is really the concept of emo design. Okay, so if we go back, the first size you want is 28 by 28. You're just gonna go ahead and export that in your emo file for your client and then PNG, always. And you name this one like, oh, whoa. <laughs> Oh, whoa, or like fail or whatever, you know, like derp 28. That's how I do here. You see like 28, 56, 112 and my original size all the time. So normally I would start file, save as, by the way, don't put that background. I put it for show, but you don't want the background to be there. And PNG handles transparency very well. So you don't need any background like this. It's See that this is transparency here. Perfect. Perfect. Save as. Boom. PNG. 412. And then I press F1 again. You know, it gives me a, it's a shortcut that I set. If you want to set your settings, you go to like edit keyboards and shortcut. Find a way to edit your shortcuts. Uh, yeah, F1. Boom. 112. Oh, here's okay. I, <laughs> I didn't finish this. Um, yeah, just try to do the same thing here. Put it in pixel, not in anything else. Just, just pixels. Maybe if you're gonna be doing a shirt, you're gonna want it in inches. But now nah, it's a, it's a little emote. So pixels, and then automatic here. Here's the thing. If you're using Photoshop CS6, I noticed a big difference between like automatic and when you you size down your drawing, you want to keep the drawing crisp. You don't want it to be like becoming blurry. And the best downsizing option here used to be uh, bicubic sharper for reduction. So if you're not using the most up-to-date Photoshop, I highly recommend bicubic sharper. And you're gonna see a difference. You want to to use bicubic smoother for enlargement. I hear that preserve detail is the best new option for larger artworks, especially when you have like gradients and stuff. But still bicubic sharper is the best for reduction. I now I just use automatic and that's purely on this new Photoshop CC 2019. Uh, the bicubic automatic actually gives me the same result as bicubic sharper. So I think that it automatically goes to sharper for reduction and automatically to it smoother for enlargement so now you don't even need to mess around with it okay this is a question that people ask me all the time well other than uh, are you using a mouse or a pen tablet okay i'm using a pen tablet um wait wrong 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 god damn it yeah you see <laughs> i'm using my stream deck here I'm, I'm new to this hand cam yes as if any professional Illustrator would use a mouse. M mice were not meant. Do you say mice or mouses? I think it's mouses because it's an object. Whatever. I'm French Canadian. I, w I don't speak English. So, yeah, mouses were not meant to draw. They're not meant to draw. Never use those. Never ever use those. Okay, so this is the tablet that I'm using. Uh, you absolutely don't need any of the cool, fancy $3,000 Wacom Cintiq. I think I personally feel like Wacom has a bit of like the Apple model of, uh, I mean business model, where they never like do any discounts, uh, they never sell their older products for cheaper, and they just know they own the market currently and I can't wait for them to have some some competition. There's a lot of alternative brands out there like Huion and Yinova, so you can probably get like if you really want a display tablet, you can probably get a much 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 cheaper alternative. And personally, I, I prefer investing in a, in a great monitor for my streaming, for everything. Like a full RGB monitor is good for artists to get like the crisp, like amazing colors. And that's probably better than a Cintiq for me. I prefer like looking straight and not hurting my neck, but that's just personal opinion. And maybe I'm, I am biased because I haven't really like, you know, spent a week drawing on a Cintiq tablet. So, so yes, <laughs> what uh, people ask me all the time on my stream, is like, what is this background thing that you have with all of your emotes showing? Wow, so many emotes. Um, well, it's actually just a canvas. It's a canvas that I just like snapped to the background like this, boop. And 
all of my other files that you may see laying around like this on my screen are just another canvas. It's just not snapped. See? So let me show you what I do usually. Okay, just like this. So normally, especially when I stream, I like showing off um, like my recent work or like the, the batch that I'm working on at the moment. And I would just lay them here. Those are just canvases. Boom. One, uh, 408 by 408, just original emote size. And the big background, that is just something very personal of mine. That's my own technique. Everybody has a different one. Uh, this this is a big page, like it's like 4,000 by 2,000 pixels size. Uh, it's generally just serving as portfolio, but also like as a little little place to drop my emotes and work. I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. So, if I'm testing here, different different things on my drawing, the like boulder line. Okay, I press my shortcut F1 for image size, and then 28 for 28 by 28, which is like the the one that you want your emote to look good in. And I just drag and drop it in the other canvas. And then I can compare them. See, I just go back to my canvas here. Control Z. Control Z if I don't like this change. Uh, I can try weird pupils like this. <laughs> and then I put it back, see what I did. I, okay, F1, 28, enter. Now I'm back in 28 by 28. Um, at the end like this, when you just resize, just press C for crop and then enter twice. And then go back to pressing V for the se selecting your character. Uh, that's, that's just going to make sure that whatever is outside of the borders here will not like show up in, when you drag it. Um, so drag and drop. Oh, and now I just put them to get next to each other and I can compare them like that. See. I will show you what a lot of people like doing, other artists that I've seen. I can go into like view uh, window here, uh, arrange, new window, boom. I see a lot of artists doing that when making emotes. Maybe you might like that better, but this is just a duplicate window of the same window you're working on here. See what I did? Window, arrange, new window for oh well, dot PSD. So whatever change I will do here. You're gonna see the live changes in the bottom. Look at that. The eyes here, the eyes here. See what I mean? This is pretty nifty because you can all immediately see in smaller size what your change looked like in real time. Uh, I have a hard time explaining why I don't like doing that personally. But it's just, I think I don't trust the, the like, you know how you had to like downsize your window manually? And you count on like Photoshop's ability to display like this this weird downsize uh, like I don't know what kind of resampling it uses if you're just doing that but I don't think it's the real resampling that Photoshop can do. I mean that's just my theory, but I prefer having a a legit 28 by 28 file showing right here, and then I can uh, I can compare them together. So that's why you'll always see my workflow being like a bunch of emotes in this gray page. I remember choosing this dark color back in the days for this background so I can see what the emotes look like in the in the dark chat of Twitch. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoy and for the next video we're gonna take a deeper dive into the design phase and we're gonna try to better understand the size limitations of emote design. If you like this video please consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching!